Hi everyone. Today I'm going to start a new uh, series that I'm going to call Coincidence? You Decide. And what I'm going to do is use the poem to lead me to a couple of areas in the book that may or may not be hints. And again, that's up for you to decide if they're hints and uh, whether or not this is all a coincidence. Some of this stuff I may have discussed in previous videos, and if so, I'll link them at the end and put them in the playlist. So, here we go. The first one, the lead-in sentence before the poem, if we look at it, is, so I wrote a poem containing nine clues that if followed precisely will lead to the end of my rainbow and the treasure, colon. So he doesn't end the sentence. Now, let's look at some definitions. The word so is defined as to the amount or degree expressed or understood to such an extent, okay? And while we're at it, let's look at the definition for as, okay? As means to the same degree or quantity that. Often used as a co-relative after the word so or as. Now, if we count the number of words from as to so, okay? We end up with 23 words, okay? So, just for grins and giggles, let's go to page 23 in the book. That's the first page of Jump Starting a Learning Curve. Page 22 has a picture of forest on it, which is the page that will appear directly left of this page. Notice that he's sitting here, alone, and I guess you can consider this is treasures boldly displayed. Okay, so let's look at this place here. We went to page 23, and we noticed that the drop cap is I, and the beginning word is in. So he's in there, okay? Now, if we count the number of words in the first line, we have seven, as I have gone alone in there, okay? So if we go down seven lines, we'll notice that we see Forrest Fenn here. As I explained in my other video, this is the only place that you're going to see Forrest. Uh, alone in the entire book with the exception of the title page in fact you won't not only will you not see forest fan the word forest only appears in this book two places here and here both on page 23 okay and in here in there he's talking about if it weren't for my name i wouldn't have anything at all and then down here no matter what i lacked or lost bad grades and all they couldn't take away my name well here's his name Seven lines down because of seven words in the first part of the poem. Now, if we count all of the words, in, in, including the conjunction and, we end up with, as I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, it's 12 words. Okay? So if we count down 12 from his name, we end up at his name again, right here, on this line. Okay? Now, this chapter is called Jump Starting a Learning Curve. I think he's... He's using the hint, which is the lead-in sentence, which is totally optional. This is a hint to kind of get you started on how to count and will work. Okay. So this is just an example of how to get in there. So let's take it to the next step. Let's look at the word so again. The next time that so appears in the poem is where it says, so why is it that I must go? Okay. Now, if we count the words from as to so, we have 109 words. So, let's go to page 109. 109 is the first page in Teachers What Ropes. Okay? So, in Teachers What Ropes, how many, after the word so, he is saying, why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? That's 15 words. If we pull down 15 lines, we're going to end up here where it says, as well as my life, so I very really carefully pulled in my pulled in my shoulders, put both hands in my pockets and then towards the door. This whole sentence, okay, is answering a question. Why did he go n not from the poem, but why did he leave? And I'm not saying that the, the that all the, the poem is in a Kachina doll store, but this is an example. Why did he leave it? Now why, isn't it interesting that the poem is asking a question. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? Now, we get to this page, and the very first word in this page is because. He's answering a question here. Because. He's telling you why. Okay? Because we really didn't know what we were doing in the art business, right? 
So he went to the store. Now, why did he leave that store? Why is it that he must go and leave his trove for all to seek? It was outrageously rude of those people to threaten me like that, and I suddenly feared for my wallet as well as my life. So I very carefully pulled my shoulders in, put both hands in my pockets, and inched towards the door. Now, could it be that these signs that scared him here are the same kind of signs that are going to appear right at a border where he, he didn't go into that area, but let's say he hid the treasure right next to that area. Okay? Again, the poem let us hear. Most people would not normally see this as a hint because when you're casually reading it, it's not it within the context of the poem. You wouldn't notice that this is answer because. I mean, think about it. The poem, so why is it that I must go and leave my trophy for all to seek? Because. It was outrageously rude of those people to threaten me like that. You see what's going on here? And the method that we got to this place is the same method that we got to the first one by counting. So is, is this a coincidence? I, I, I don't know. That's up for you to decide. So now let's count from as to the second so that appears in the poem. We have 138 words. So let's go. That, that's in dances with, Dancing with the Millennium. Okay. But before we go there, let me show you the, the ending sentence after the poem in Goldemore says, there are also other subtle clues sprinkled in the stories. It was vital that nobody share my knowledge about the location of the treasure. Notice he mentions knowledge here and sharing knowledge. Two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. That's actually a saying that the mafia used to use. Okay, so notice that this is still the same sentence. All of a sudden, he goes off on another tangent. He says, I dreamed the other night that I had been reincarnated as Captain Kidd and went to Gardner's Isle looking for the treasure. It scared me so badly that I was jarred, jarred awake. And I don't remember if I found whether I found it or not. Just, just keep that in the back of your mind. This could be where the lead-in sentence that says, so I found, I wrote a poem containing nine clues that it followed precisely will lead to the end of my rainbow and the treasure, colon. Could each sentence in here be a list or an element within a series that he's displaying with the colon? And each one of these leads to specific hints. And again, and it also leads you to the treasure, of course. The hints are totally optional. The book is optional. The stuff that I'm talking about here is all optional, I feel, unless you want to get the hints. Do you need the hints? No, Forrest made that pretty clear. You don't need them. You can use just the poem. But if you want to, and the poem is straightforward. The poem is not going to require you to count words. I don't think Forrest would do that. Not to find a treasure. But what do you do with to find a chest? Well, absolutely, right? You're not necessarily counting. You're doing what the poem is telling you to do. You're, what does the word as mean? You're taking it from one degree to the next. At one degree to the next, Okay. You're doing what the poem is telling you to do. And this here is telling you to use the book. Not only that, books are made of paper. Okay? Where does paper come from? It comes from wood. So at the end of the year, if you are brave and in the wood, I'll give you titles of the gold. Could he be talking about the book? This seems to be talking about the book. Okay? His treasures are the stories. Anyway, I don't want to go off on that tangent. Is this a coincidence? You decide. So let's go to page 138 now because we got there from counting as to the second cell. Now, we have, again, 13 lines. Hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If we count down 13 lines, it takes us here, okay? And he's talking, look what he's talking about here, first of all. Listen to what the poem says. So hear me all and listen good. Well, boom, here we are. He's talking about bells. You can hear bells. They clank right? Okay. He's also mentioning a land type here. BLM land is where he hid most of the bells. Could that, now remember my other video where I talk about a proxy item. I think a proxy is the bell. Inside the bell or, or a jar is the title to the gold. Until you take title to the gold, you'll not, you won't get to the chest. So I think that the chest is buried out of metal detector range. Okay. And he says down here, notice this, hopefully no one will happen upon a bell for many years. Around a thousand would be perfect. Now, didn't he use the word happen upon recently when he said nobody's going to happen upon my chest? 
Well, the only way that he could clearly state that, because a ranger, a hiker, somebody could find it, is if it's buried. Okay? And I think that this means that the proxy item is hidden on the land. Anyhow, again, it's not really the topic. I'm going up on a tangent again. I apologize. But the poem led me here. Okay? The poem took me here in the same method that it took me to the other two locations. And when I get here, he's talking about something, again, that seems to mirror what he's discussing in the poem. Okay? And, 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 and he's telling us, it led us right down here, that, that, you know, to illustrate my point, you know, of my logic, you know, and he's talking imagination is more important than knowledge, which goes back to, um, a dreaming is imagination, okay, daydreaming, which goes back to the end of the Goldemore chapter, okay. I think that all this stuff is tied in, and I think that the hints are like this. You notice that these hints don't stand out during a traditional read. This isn't Robert Redford. This isn't a 36-inch stub. This isn't Yellowstone National Park, okay. This stuff is the kind of stuff that, in a normal read, you may never pick up on it, okay? But when the poem sends you there, and the place that it sends you to happens to be discussing the context in that area of the poem, is that a coincidence? I don't know, you know? That's up for you guys to tell. And if you like these videos, please subscribe. I could use more subscribers and like and also help me pass this video around. I'm trying to get more uh, more people into this stuff. So if you could do that, I would really appreciate it. And let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I'm going to try not to say too much in the comments because I don't want to add any of my theory in there. It's, it's already in the videos. I'm curious what you guys have to say about it, um, considering the fact that there's been a lot of discussion of whether or not you can avoid the rabbit holes and detect the hints in a book. I personally think you can. I found many more than what I'm showing you here. I can't show all of them because that pretty much would be giving away my solve. But I'm showing you enough that should get you interested in, you know, spur your mind to go back and look. Look at all the what ifs in the poem. Can you find a connection to the Homer Brown in the poem? You know, how about Warm Waters Halt? You know, and I'm talking about the poem taking you there. I'm not talking about reading a book and saying, well, you know, Yellowstone has warm water, so that's got to be where it is. That's pure speculation. The poem didn't take you there. You made a decision that that's where warm waters halt. That may be correct. Maybe it isn't correct. You know, maybe Yellowstone is a home of brown. Who knows? But the point is, is all of this stuff a coincidence? You decide, let me know. And thanks again. Have a great day. Bye.